Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for, can everyone hear me okay? Uh, thank you for coming. Um, the name of my talk is uh, Data Munging with Pandas. Uh, just a quick show of hands. I know that uh, we had pretty good coverage on people who had some experience with Python. Uh, how many people, and, uh, had, and we'll do like a keep your hands in the air type of thing. How many people have heard of Pandas before? Okay, everybody. Okay, awesome. How many people, and it's okay to be complete, how many people have used Pandas before? Okay, a little less. Uh, how many people own the Pandas book? Less. Uh, how many people do feel like they're like expert level Pandas? Okay, very few. Okay, none. All right, one or two. All right, perfect. All right, so, um, so this, this talk is about uh, Pandas and it's, um, it's about uh, data munging. And uh, I geared it towards people who had some previous experience with Python and they, you know, you're here for a reason. Uh, you like Python and uh, you want to learn uh, something about pandas. And uh, specifically also, um, people talk a lot about, a lot about the, the zen of Python. And uh, what I would like to help you experience is the, uh, the beginnings of the, the zen of pandas. Um, so, a little bit on my own background, uh, I'm the CTO at OpenMail in Venice Beach. Um, we are applying modern data analysis technology to a really old channel, uh, email. Uh, and uh, we're about 20 people. Uh, we started up last year. We're having a fantastic time over there. Um, before that, I was a uh, software engineer at Google. I was uh, worked on uh, Google News and uh, Picasa Web, and then I got onto YouTube, uh, which is where I got the bulk of my Python experience, and you know really got into Python. And um, and specifically, the way that I got started with Python uh, was that I was trying to write something in C++ that uh, involved doing some complex indexing into a hash. And realizing it was just this total pain, and then somehow stumbled upon this really easy way of doing it in Python, and realized, wow, you know, I really like the ability to, you know, have like a tuple into a dictionary in in uh, Python, and it just works. And you know, in C++, I had to do all this complicated stuff, and I was like, ah, I'm, I'm programming in the wrong language. And so I got onto a project that was a Python project, and um, you know, really enjoyed myself. Um, you know, I have a, a background in math, um, but you know, I think you know, like many people, I, I found it hard to kind of you know find my my way into this enormous data science ecosystem, and um, and it's like you know, where's the right starting point? And you know, I felt really comfortable using Python as a starting point, um, but then there's you know, there's NumPy, there's SciPy, you know, there's uh, Stats Models, there's Scikit-Learn, you know, there's you know all these different possible starting points. And I'm gonna I'm gonna make the argument that if you're coming from a Python background, the right starting point is pandas, um, and what and the reason uh, uh, for that. Uh, so this is this is who I uh, who I think you are. Um, the reason why I think that, that pandas is the, is the right starting point is that um, it provides this, uh, well, let me, let me first give the background for the people who don't have it. So what is pandas? So, so pandas is a, it introduces uh, into Python a notion of, a, of what's called a data frame, which is this idea that Wes McKinney borrowed from R, um, and uh, it's a library for you know, data analysis and, and very importantly, data manipulation. So it is a, uh, you know, what we call like data munging, which is, you know, I often talk about uh, like the Apollo 13 movie uh, where they say, you know, fit, you know, these, uh, you know, they're trying to fix the air filters in the Apollo 13 and they're saying, well, you know, you got to fit this to this, you know, using this. And, uh, you know, when you're trying to fundamentally take some data and reshape it, like that's when, that's when Pandas really shows its strength. Um, but the, the, the thing that I, I want to kind of uh, get us to is this idea of, you know, how we can connect what, what Pandas provides to your core knowledge, uh, you know, which is, is Python. And what I'm going to uh, make the claim is that what, what Pandas gives you is it provides a, a better Python. Uh, so it, it, I think it's that fundamental. Like to describe it as a library, I feel like does not fully do it justice. Like it takes the, the core Python data structures, which are you know, the list and the dictionary, and it, it makes them a lot better. And once you start using pandas, you're not going to want to go back to just vanilla lists and dictionaries. It's, it's, it's mind opening in the way that, for me, Python was initially mind opening. Um, you know, so it, it provides like this, this whole new playing field that is, you know, just, it's, a, it's a better way of programming Python. Um, and 
I think that uh, you know, for most people, they, they tend to have you know, fairly practical data munging problems before they have to do any like, advanced, even like you know, linear algebra or any kind of machine learning. It's like if you, you know, basically if you can't reshape data, if you can't kind of munge and wrangle data, then you really don't, you know, it, it, it's sort of like you're, you're operating on a very weak foundation. So I would say like, you know, focus on, on data munging as kind of the core skill and then get to the point where you can reliably reshape data and get it into a graph. And then, you know, down the, you know, then after that, then doing, you know, more advanced modeling becomes necessary. Um, but just getting to the point where you can you know, do a good visualization of data is, is an achievement in and of itself, and I think it's really worthwhile. Um, and then the other thing about um, uh, Pandas that I think is, is phenomenal is that you know, it has tight integration with the IPython notebook, and uh, I I'm highly recommend, if you guys haven't uh, you know, used it, I highly recommend uh, installing it, trying it out. Uh, it's, uh, it has an amazing ability, like revolutionary ability to, to share data analysis uh, that I think is, is part of why we're experiencing this enormous surge in the uh, Python ecosystem for data analysis. So basically when you, it's a browser-based IDE, when you, when you program in it, you can uh, sh you know, export what you uh, see as HTML, you can pop it up into a blog, you can uh, you know, push it up onto GitHub, people can view it using the uh, IPython uh, notebook uh, viewer Chrome extension. And so you know, it just, it, it's like a whole level of, of interaction and, and sharing that I feel like it has created a very virtuous cycle. So, um, so those, are, those are some of the reasons why I think uh, uh, Pandas is, is super exciting. Um, so the, the, the core thing that I want to describe here is just basically on this slide. Um, and what, uh, what I want to talk about is, uh, is a you know, fairly prosaic topic, but it's indexing. Uh, so what, uh, what Python gives you is uh, allows you to you know, you, you have your, your fundamental data structures, uh, you know, lists and dictionaries. And, um, you know, you can index into, a, if you want to get something out of a, out of a list, uh, you can, you pass in an integer and you say, you know, give me item number, you know, three from this list and it, it comes out of the list, right? And then you also have within Python uh, list, you can do a slice. Um, so you can say, give me, you know, items, uh, you know, three through five or, or give me five until the end of the, of the list. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a, you know, kind of a notation that's easy to take for granted, but it's very powerful. Um, and so, uh, so, that's, so, so, you know, let's just pop that one onto the stack there. So, you know, so you have like, you know, this notion of slices. Now, you also have in, um, in Python dictionaries, they, you know, you can, you can uh, let's imagine that you are using, you know, strings in a Python dictionary uh, as the keys. Um, you typically, you know, don't have, well, you don't have a way of doing something like a slice. Uh, you know, you, or you can do it with, you know, some extra manipulation. Um, but there isn't some notion of like, you know, give me, you know, the everyone, you know, whose name, you know, is John or after, right? Or between John and, uh, and uh, you know, and uh, Richard. Um, so there isn't like this notion of a range in a dictionary because it's, it's not an ordered dictionary. So, and there is in Python uh, like an ordered dict uh, collection, um, but it is, when you look at it compared to, you know, what Pandas offers you, it's like woefully underpowered. It doesn't give you any of these kind of nice indexing features. Um, so, so the, the thing that you should think of when you think of pandas is it's, it's actually this very natural extension of the Python language where essentially it's, it's up, dramatically upgrading the indexing capabilities of Python. Um, so where previously you, know, you, ha you had this kind of limited ability um, to, you could do slices and lists, now you can do slices in a dictionary-like object where essentially the keys are anything you want and then you can take like ranges of those things. And it turns out that that ends up opening the door for all this other capability. And then there's, there's two more upgrades that you get within Pandas. And uh, so one of them is what is sort of is confusingly called Boolean indexing. And, and all it means is that you can pass in a, a list of true false values. Um, so actually, let me, let me back up for a second here. So, so this notion is like, okay, so, so, we, so you can upgrade this notion of, uh, of slices in the dictionary. Um, but what if, given a list, imagine you wanted to index a list with another list. Uh, and actually, as uh, was pointed out to me before the talk, it's actually a capability that some other languages have, but Python doesn't have that. So, so how would you go about doing that? Um, so let's say that you had like a list of, of 10 elements and you wanted to get like, you know, the, the second, fifth, and seventh element, right? Um, you know, in Python right now, you, know, you can do that, you know, through some manipulation, but you can't just pass in a list with like the numbers like, you know, 
two, five, and seven in it, and then get back that subset. Um, and and pandas effectively gives you that that ability. So it's it's a it's a notion that they uh, borrows from NumPy uh, called a you know fancy indexing. Um, and so you get that not only in a, a list-like structure but also in dictionaries. Um, and so that, that that's kind of like one of the the, the um, so the, the, one of the first upgrades is that you, you can do this kind of integer list based uh, indexing. And then the other upgrade, the, 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 the final upgrade is that um, you can do this thing called Boolean indexing, which basically means that if you, if you have a list of say length 10 and you want to get some subset of those values, you could pass in a Boolean list where of, uh, you know, so a list of true and false is, and then it will give you, it'll select just the subset where those Booleans are, are true. Um, and so, what, uh, so, so, you know, as, as sort of like technical as all this sounds, like th this is like the big upgrade. And everything else that, you know, is in pandas or, you know, you can view it as all these other nice things kind of fall out of like, hey, suddenly I can, I can do better indexing on, on this new type of object I've been given. Um, so, so that, so this slide right now is like, that, that's basically the zen of pandas. And like my, my, my hope is, is to connect what we're going to go through and show you with kind of what you already know. Uh, and so when you think of, you know, pandas, uh, we're going to talk about data frames and series. Um, we, you want to connect it to your know, dictionaries and lists. And they're basically dictionaries and lists, but with these, these three uh, upgraded capabilities, specifically that you can, you can take slices into a dictionary-like object, you can do Boolean indexing, and you can do what they call fancy indexing. And you know, surprisingly, when you add all that together, you get this really powerful tool for doing data analysis. Um, so that's the only, uh, I think, exclamation point that you'll see. Uh, okay, so um, so getting started with all this stuff, you know, is super simple. And you know, I, I see a lot of times, you know, people don't necessarily get everything going right away because it's like, oh, we gotta get around to installing it. Well, you know, there's there's no excuse. You know, it's just find a command line, pop in these three commands. And uh, this browser, it'll pop open your browser and there's going to be this window where you can start typing stuff in. So, um, you know, it's, it's super, super easy to get started. Uh, and then I would also recommend getting the IPython Notebook uh, Viewer, which is a browser extension that allows you to look at, uh, uh, basically when people upload a, an IPython Notebook file to GitHub, you can view that right in your browser, which turns out to be extremely useful. Um, so, and this here is uh, in a, kind of a, piece of prologue that I typically use, and you'll probably develop something like this for yourselves, uh, where you know, just at the beginning of uh, some notebook, you can just pop this into one of your cells in the notebook, and uh, this will kind of um, you know, get some, some nice things in that, that you need, and you know, different importing conventions. Uh, and you'll see at the top where, you know, from pandas, import uh, data frame and series, uh, you know, that's just, those are the two workhorse objects that uh, we're gonna be talking about. Um, Okay, so, so the core data structures in pandas are uh, the series and the data frame. Uh, and you could think of uh, a series, you know, as I was describing before, as you know, essentially this kind of upgraded dictionary that allows um, you know, the, the, those, those three kinds of advanced indexing. Uh, and then you can think of a data frame as essentially a collection of series, um, although Probably where you'll end up, or you know, if, if your visualization system works the way that mine does, you'll probably end up thinking of, as, of a data frame as kind of like a SQL table, or, or just like a, a table of data. Um, so, so then from there, uh, you know, the question is like, how do you create a good workflow? So you're gonna you're gonna um, you know have some basic modes that you kind of get into, and uh, you need to be able to do things like you know create uh, one of these objects. Uh, so create a data frame, view it. Um, you know, so in the same way if you created a dictionary, you, know, you, uh, you want to be able to see what's in it, you want to be able to pull out some subset of the data, uh, you want to be able to update uh, the data structure, uh, you, know, you could do an uh, insert, you can filter, uh, and some of these things are going to have analogies. If you, you know, one of the assumptions that I think is pretty reasonable is that people have some kind of SQL background, uh, and you know, the most common SQL query is something like you know, select these columns from this table, join with this other table, uh, where some filter applies, grouped by um, you know, some other aggregate column, and, uh, you know, and then apply some order by clauses. So a lot of these core operations are essentially mirrors of things that you can do in SQL, but now you can do them uh, very conveniently inside Python. Um, but then there are other operations here. So uh, if you look at like map or uh, conform, rotate, 
clean, bin. Those are operations that people typically, or you know, you can still do them in SQL, but it typically involves more advanced knowledge. And they're things that are like super convenient to do in pandas. So things that you might never have gotten around to doing, you'll find yourself doing in pandas uh, just because it's it's really easy. So so what I what I have here is just like a kind of a demonstration of uh, or a, sort of examples of these these core operations. Uh, and um, and then at the end of it, what uh, I'm going to get to is I think the you know, uh, the most interesting operation is uh, this notion of rotation. So I think, um, you know, if, uh, if time allows, then I can uh, go over kind of what this notion of uh, rotation in, in pandas allows you to accomplish. Um, so, so the basic core thing is, you know, can you, can you create a, a data frame? Um, so in this case, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different ways in which you can initialize a data frame. Um, the, the, the simplest one, I think, that is most intuitive for someone with a Python background is just, it's a, you can think of it as a, a list of dictionaries where each dictionary corresponds to a row in the data frame. So you can see here that um, I passed in uh, you know, three different rows, and then the columns in the table that resulted was the superset of columns uh, from each of those dictionaries. So some of the dictionaries had a B column, some of them did not. Um, but you end up getting you know, a column for each row that is uh, you know, in any of those dictionaries. Uh, and then if, it, if the data wasn't available, it fills it out with the, with the null value. Um, so then the, 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 probably the most common command that you're going to end up running is, is head. You, know, you have some data frame, you load it up from a CSV file, and then you're just like, okay, what's in there, right? Maybe it's really big, so I just want to look at the top n entries. Um, so this is a, a data set that I borrowed, uh, which is just uh, some. Uh, you guys are familiar with the Kaggle Titanic data set. Uh, it's just a uh, you know list of survivors on the or people who uh, were on the Titanic and um, you know information that we have about them. Uh, and you know you load it up, and then you can look at it right there. And, and it'll actually dem it'll actually if you're using IPython notebook, you'll be able to see it there. You know, right integrated with your IDE, uh, which it turns out is just it opens up this level of interactivity, which is is very virtuous. Um, there's another command that I use a lot, which is display, uh, where you can take a data frame and uh, just for you, you can basically show it multiple times from within a cell, uh, and that's also uh, one that. You know, if you're if you're actually using pandas on a regular basis, I, I recommend using it. Um, and so, one thing that people often run into, I find, is that when they're doing selection on pandas uh, data frames, um, you know, there's so many different options. You know, there's you know lock, i lock, i x, i a t, a t, x s. It's like too many options, and people get hung up on how you do the selection. And part of that is that you know there's some history in terms of how all this stuff evolved. Um, but uh, just if you use uh, dot lock, uh, it'll it'll get the job done. Uh, so you know, just as a as a pro tip, I, I recommend just sort of ignoring all the other ones until you're familiar with dot lock. And it's really just uh, you specify your your x-axis and your y-axis, and then uh, you're good to go. So you can see in this example there, uh, I'm, I have a data frame, and I'm calling uh, you know the dot lock uh, underlying structure, and I'm saying. The, the colon is a, is a slice operator, same as in uh, Python list. I'm just saying give me you know, the entirety of the x-axis and then just give me the a and b columns from the y-axis. And so it gives me this little slice. And then you can see in the example, uh, the 28 example, uh, that I'm doing a slice now uh, on the x-axis and also passing in some stuff on the y-axis. So, so just, just uh, remember to use uh, dot lock and your, your selection. You don't have to worry about the other stuff for right now. Um, and then you know basic things like you know how do you update a data uh, frame? Um, you know you can basically pass in. Uh, this is a uh, you can use. It works almost you know, very analogously analogously to how uh, it works within uh, a Python dictionary. Um, you know instead but instead of passing in you know one value, you're passing in two values for the x-axis and the y-axis. So you can see in the uh, cell number 12 there. You know I've created a, a data frame previously, and now I am I'm updating uh, the uh, the one call one uh, value to to Q, and then you can see that it shows up. Um, and then if you want to uh, insert stuff, I would say don't. Um, for the most part, like uh, the way that uh, pandas works, the underlying um, system is not insert friendly. Uh, so you can do it though; it's there, but just as a, a matter of course, like it's like maximally inefficient because the underlying uh, array manipulations are based on fixed size blocks. So yeah, but yeah, you can you can put more stuff in there. So it, it remains dictionary like, and for you know for kind of interactive data visualization or exploratory analysis, it's it'll be fine. 
um, but just be aware that it comes with this heavy computational cost. Uh, but it is covered, you can do it. Um, so then the, uh, th this particular structure here is like the, the, the filtering um, operation. Uh, if you want to take a data frame and say, hey, you know what, I just want to take the subset of the data frame where the A column is less than 10, that's what this particular example accomplishes. Uh, and for the most part, you know, that's what you end up using if you want to uh, you know, do some you know, kind of filtering or it's, it's one of the most common patterns. There are some other ways to do it. Um, but but the, the interesting thing here actually that's, uh, that's constructed here is that uh, if you look at um, uh, the, the top line there, um, what is going on in that index is maybe not what you might initially imagine. Uh, when we're taking you know, the interior uh, element there, DFA less than 10, it actually constructs a Boolean list. Uh, and that Boolean list gets passed into the data frame and that serves as the index. And, and just as a, a general thought about how to approach pandas, um, pandas loves to speak lists. Like it's all about the indexing. And so if you find yourself confused about how to use the API, just remember that the lowest gear is always the list. Um, so you can pass in lists and get what you want. Uh, and so, you know, because there are other ways that you can accomplish this, but they all end up being uh, essentially layers on top of like this, this core concept. Um, so just remember like, you know, pandas loves to speak lists as the index. Okay. Um, so then, you know, the basic, uh, you know, uh, operations like, um, you know, if, if you want to take a column and do a transformation on it, you have some basic uh, uh, transformations you can do. Um, if you want to take two data frames or two series and, uh, you know, or two data frames and pop them to, you know, kind of glue them together, uh, you have the uh, concat operator. So you imagine you just have two tables and now you want to merge them into one table. Uh, you can do that with concat. Uh, you have to talk a bit about, you know, what kind of concatenation you're doing. You're concat concatenating top to bottom or like left to right. Uh, so there's some additional parameters you can pass in there, but you can do this basic gluing that you can technically do in SQL using like union operators. Uh, but for the most part, I don't actually see a lot of people who are comfortable with that kind of thing. So uh, you find yourself doing these things in pandas very naturally because it, it feels more like you, 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 have, you can actually touch the objects. Whereas with SQL, you tend to feel like there's this you know, layer of interpretation that makes it hard to actually you know, get a good reference to, to the objects that you're using. So it doesn't feel that way in pandas. Um, so then uh, the, the, the join operation, uh, if you want to take two tables and essentially like join them SQL style, unfortunately it's called merge. It probably should have been called join, but they ended up using that for a, a different method that kind of does a shortcutted version of this. Um, so this is an example where we have um, two data frames and uh, you know, we're, we're merging them together on the, the, the key value there. Um, and so you, know, you can see the output. And it operates, you know, very much like a, I mean, almost, it, it's, it's actually one of the areas I think is a little less elegant about pandas because it, it kind of apes the uh, SQL syntax for, or it apes the SQL parameters for doing a join. Uh, but within the Python syntax, it can be a little mucky, but it's just one of these things you just have to kind of master and then it, it gets to be, uh, you know, uh, pretty usable. Um, and so, uh, so that's how you, uh, so you use, uh, use the merge operator there. Um, and then here we have, uh, you know, if you were doing a, a SQL query where you would say like select and you know group by something, like that's what, this is what what we the equivalent here is the the group by method. Uh, so you know very aptly named, um, and you can see here that I have a uh, data frame uh, where I am grouping by a, a list of columns, and um, and then I'm performing like an aggregate operation on them. Uh, so in this case, I'm I'm grouping by you know, by day, partner ID, and network. And and one of the things that um, this, this structure might not be completely familiar to people, um, but there's sort of like an imaginary line here and here um, where all of this is the index and all of, uh, or all of this is the, the row index and all of this is the, the column index. Um, and when you, when you generate, uh, when, when you do group by operations um, or when, when you do uh, many operations within pandas, what you're going to see is that like these kind of you, you end up with this tendency to uh, generate these things called multi-indexes, where it's actually like a thing called a hierarchical index. And a lot of people are like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's scary and you know, it, it's too confusing to learn it. Uh, but it actually is, it, it's worth some study because multi-indexes are really what makes pandas, uh, makes it possible to do Pythonic um, 
operations and pandas and opens up all these other nice things. Uh, so you're going to see you know, multi-indexes left and right. And uh, I just say, like, you know, like power through it. And uh, eventually, you kind of grasp it. And it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So and then uh, you can see here I'm using like an aggregate operation. Um, let's see. So sorting, you all know. Uh, it's very analogous to uh, how we do sorting in SQL. Uh, and then uh, this is sort of um, a little example of how we would do uh, something where we're like dropping outliers in uh, in a data frame. So you have some table and you're like, hey, I want to get everything, you just get rid of stuff that's you know, uh, too many standard deviations away from the mean. Uh, and so this is an example that kind of just comes through and drops all that stuff. Uh, and, and for the most part, like if you're coming to data analysis without necessarily, like uh, you're still picking up, you know, like a workflow, what I would say is that you'll find yourself dropping data a lot more than you typically would. Like, you know, when you're, when you're just doing like pure Python backend stuff, you don't drop data all that much. You kind of try to service everything um, whereas when you're doing data analysis, it's pretty common just to be like, you know what, just drop all the nulls, you know, first check to see how many there are, but if it's just like, you know, 1%, like, you know, goodbye, like get rid of it. And, um, and I feel like, you know, as a, as a tip, I found that very useful. Like I used to try to clean up all my data, you know, try to like, you know, fix everything. And now I'm sort of like, just drop the bad stuff and move on with your life. Um, so, okay, so that's the clean operation. Okay, conform. Um, Conform is one of those ones that uh, you're going to hear this term like brought up a lot when you hear like the term re-index. Uh, so, so you have uh, all these index operations you can do in pandas, and, and re-index specifically is sort of like this this master operation. It's terribly named. It should have been called conform. Um, and and there's other things where you look at like you're doing resampling, various types of upsampling, and they're all just different ways of saying I'm going to do an operation on the index of this data frame, and I'm going to make it look like this. And, and, uh, and re-index is the most like brutally like direct way of doing that. It just says uh, here is the here is an index. Make it look like this. If there's missing entries, just pop nans in there. If there if, uh, if, you know, if, if it doesn't show up, drop it. So it's just conform to my my will on how the, the index should be. Uh, and uh, resampling is a is a more advanced version of that. Um, so then there's uh, you know, binning, which you can think of as a kind of group by, and it's just one of these things that you just do every day when you're doing analysis. You're just like, hey, you know what? I have some, some uh, real value, some float that you know, I want to put into different ranges and uh, do some histograms, and you, know, you want to pop things into bins. And for that, you use the, uh, the, the pandas cut operator. Um, and, uh, and then, OK, this is the fun one. So, okay, so we made it here. So, so, so far, this is the last one. Um, and so we've you know, covered. You know, a set of about I think 14 operations at this point. Where you know we'll make the slides available, but if you if you if you can kind of learn how to do those 14 operations, I've I've tried to extract like a subset that will give you a workflow, so you'll be able to just kind of slip into one of those modes, and at any given moment you're kind of doing you know selecting, cleaning, um, you know grouping, aggregating, all these different things that you can do, and and this is sort of the final one, and um, and it was actually the one that got me you know most interested in pandas initially is this, this notion of rotation. And actually, our, our, our CEO, uh, Chuck Orsini, there in the back, uh, was sort of responsible for me getting interested in this uh, because he would always ask me for data sets. And then he'd be like, oh, don't worry, but don't worry about doing any analysis. And I'll, I'll just pop it into a pivot table in Excel. And then I'll, I'll do all the analysis. You know? And I was like, well, that's, that's complete BS. You know, you're, 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 you're coming out on the business side. I'm a tech guy. I can't believe that there's some additional thing that you can do that I can't do. I'm like, what's a pivot table? And, um, <laughs> and, so, uh, and so I was determined that you know, there was, wasn't going to be anything that, uh, that, you know, that I, I, I couldn't do on, on the tech side of things. And, um, and so this, this led me into, uh, into doing these things in Pandas, because Pandas makes it remarkably easy to do these rotations on data. Um, and uh, so you know, I think we're all familiar, or hopefully, you know, with this notion of like a, a matrix transpose. And that's like one, really kind of the simplest rotation that you can do with your data. Um, and what, uh, what, what people don't necessarily realize is that pivot table is actually like a kind of fractional rotation on your data. Um, and so there's. Uh, you basically can take your columns and turn them into rows. You can take your rows and turn them into columns. And, um, and there's just a, a set of very simple operations. Uh, and the two operations, so uh, the two operations you really need to know are like set index and unstack. And it turns out that you can do any pivot table uh, just using those two operations. Uh, maybe with like dropping some NAs if they get in your way, right? Um, uh, and so 
but what you what you need to in order to be able to actually like fully you know understand how all that stuff is like the output of that you have to kind of you know spend a little bit of time looking at multi indexes and kind of you know work on your visualization of of how like you know what these outputs actually are um, and uh, what, one thing that I'll just point out is that uh, you know when you when you run into a multi index it's really you could think of it as just a regular index but the the entries are tuples you know like if you're familiar with python tuples that's basically what a multi index is and in fact that's how you can initialize a multi index if you need to um, and so basically it's like you know maybe reset an index to like push everything out of the main index and then set your index up the way that you want and then do like unstack 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 and then suddenly you like pivoted things the way that you want and uh, and, and, and the cool thing about it is that you can actually enumerate every possible pivot. So whereas before, if you were in Excel, you have to like, you know, drag and drop and all this, you can actually just write a program that loops over all the different possible pivots and, you know, generates like a, a way of, um, you know, so you can just like say, okay, I want to graph by this pivot, by this one. You can generate all the graphs and just look at it. And uh, uh, it's, it's very, very powerful technique. So, um, and, and, and so to kind of close things out here, um, I gave a, uh, so I'm giving like a list of, an example of, uh, of using unstack to pivot a data frame. So I've created a really simple data frame here um, where the columns are you know, A, B, C, and D. And then um, the index on the, on the left-hand side, this is the default index for pandas, is that it'll just fill in like an integer index. But you can put strings in there, you can put whatever you want in there. Um, so you have the, uh, when I say index, I mean row index, because the column's an index as well. Um, so so the, the row indexes are these integers, the column index are these strings, and then we have these different values here. Um, and then, so that's just like the, the, you know, the raw setup. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to apply unstack uh, multiple times. So just remember here, you see at the top row here, you see uh, you know, foo one, negative half, negative 0.8, right? Um, so now we're going to apply unstack on that. So we do df to unstack. Uh, and now we see that the um, those, those columns have now been uh, moved over into the index, into the row index. Uh, and so, but now it's a hierarchical index. So this one is still our, uh, let's see here, let me, let me back it so we can trace one all the way through because that's, you, you kind of have to follow it here. Um, so if you look at uh, here, right, so, so negative 5.9, we're going to follow this value all the way through. So typically you would uh, access it using, uh, you know, uh, dot lock 0c and then you would get uh, negative 5.9. Okay, so then we're going to unstack once and find it again. Uh, so now it's instead of 0c, it's um, you would pass in c0 as the index and you get the same number. Uh, but you'll see that c is the outer index and, uh, and these integers, uh, so the, 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 the letter uh, indexes are here and then the integer indexes are here. So it's formed this, this multi index on, the, on what is now a series. Um, and now we're going we're gonna, to, this is where the, it starts to get fun, is now we can apply unstack again onto, to this data structure, which we've applied unstack twice, and now we've gotten to a transpose. Um, and so what was previously columns are now, uh, the column index is now the row index, and what was previously the row index is now the column index, but all the values are still preserved. So if you see here, C0 is still the, the same value that uh, we discussed before. Now um, we can do unstack again, and now we're back to everything has been shoved into the, um, into the uh, what's called the stack format again. Um, but, the, uh, but now these are reversed. Before it was the, the, the letter indexes were on the outside and the number of indexes were on the inside. Now that's reversed. But the data again is still preserved. So if we look for 0c up there, it's still the same value. So no, no, no data has been lost. It's just this is the same data being expressed in different possible formats. And then finally, we do this. And we're back at the beginning again. So it is a rotation in, in almost in a, in, a, or in, in a mathematical sense where you literally, if you just keep clicking through it enough, you'll end up back where you started. Um, and so you know, that's, that's the pivot in data table. It's like you're pivoting the data. And, uh, and eventually, you know, apart from like now it seems very abstract, but eventually you reach this point where you kind of have this, like you imagine these binder arms swinging around and you can actually see the thing rotating. And it's kind of amazing. Uh, so I highly recommend this experience. Um, and uh, yes, definitely learn how to do pivot tables. It blew, blew my mind, uh, as you can see. All right, and then um, thank you.